Hello. It's just me, Eric. I'm out here in the woods on my way out to a Splake Lake multi-purpose, multi-use trail here. Got a video going if you're listening at home. Just uh, gonna quick show what I've got hauled on my back to make it out to the old Splake Lake. Got some friends of mine up the trail uh, on some iron dogs and I just felt the need to get out on the skis today. I am dragging behind me. This is a granite gear. Polk. It probably has a name. Uh, I don't recall anymore what that specific name is, but it has its pros and cons as with any winter item gear for traveling. And it is all very dependent on the conditions. Uh, this is an excellent uh, mode of hauling if you're working with a trail like you see here. Uh, nice and packed, hard with even some previous runners that have gone through that you can kind of groove in. Uh, reason for that being is the bottom of the pulk has essentially two little runners that look more or less like the same width as a ski track that you would find on a groomed trail. Uh, so as you can see off to the side of the trail, we've got some heavy snow. I would say if I stepped off the trail, I would be in over my knee. Uh, that application for this sled would be highly discouraged as it is a little top heavy already. So what you're gonna find happening in those scenarios is it will just tip over into the deep snow and then you'll find it's not one of those things where you can just stop, turn around, right the sled and keep going. This whole apparatus is basically a harness wrapped up with two stiff poles to keep it from crashing down in on you if you're going down a steep hill and you do want to stop those poles keep it from taking out your legs from behind you um, but this is a great great way to haul this in uh, with the top heaviness you want you know some weight on the bottom of that sled um, I've actually got a pretty light load today considering the the iron doggies are dragging in uh, all of our heavy-duty supplies we are heading out to a splike lake we'll discuss the details on that later um, and then from there we're actually spending the night out at a yurt. It's a tumble home first. I'm gonna put this thing on my head and uh, strap up the pulk and then uh, head out on my way. I don't know how long I'll keep recording just because how long do you want to watch some guy skiing in the woods? I don't know, maybe uh, for a while, we'll see. Double buckle. How's the view from up there? I don't know, I've never done this. All right. Wow, this is actually one of the first downhills I've seen. It has literally been one flat spot, one real steep downhill, and then all just gradual uphills. I actually had to take the skis off at one point to 
try to get up a hill. It's not the lightest slide in the world, just on its own. And there are some, uh, some liquid supplies. Most of the heavy, heavy gear is being pulled by the snowmobiles, as I said, but I felt like we're working with about 30 degree temps. Relatively stiff winds from the west, but sunny skies. It's like the first day it's actually felt like spring out here, and that's crazy to say considering it's it's February 21st, I believe. And it hasn't been a cold winter, but it hasn't really been a warm winter. It's been it's been a bleak winter, honestly. It's been so much for that downhill. We'll make it up. Welcome to welcome to aerobics with Eric. Are you liking this? Who knows? I might not even post this crap. Listening to me snort up a hill. We are boundary waters adjacent. We're not gonna bleep out any details on where we are. I'm currently running east to west, north of roughly Rush and Banadad Lake. And if you know where the Splake Lakes are at, you could probably put it together. Or I could just tell you. I'm skiing out to Portage Lake we're going to try to jig up some splakers. Really hope we can do that. Beautiful fish. Hybrid. I'll tell you more about the, uh, the way those work when we pull one through the ice, hopefully, or at the very least, once we get some holes punched. But like I was saying, if you're looking through the video right now, you can see Beautiful blue skies. This winter has been mild, but cloudy. So this is the, really one of the first days where it's been mild and sunny. Even the winds like have a bit of a, a scent to them. It's amazing how much you miss, how you don't realize how much you miss that until you get out here. It's like that first spring rain where you get the smell of dirt. The nose, more than anything else, hibernates in the winter in the out of doors. So about a two, two and a half mile ski out from roughly the Poplar Lake public access. In the winter, that road does not get plowed all the way down to the public access. There's really only enough parking for one or maybe two vehicles where the road ends. So you'll wanna be careful if you're ever putting in there, but there are better places to put in to get in to some of the lakes off of Poplar. Specifically, any of the businesses on Poplar Lake. A little bit more amenable to people parking in the winter because the numbers are a little bit lower and they're not hurting for parking as much. You're still gonna wanna ask. And there are other places off of uh, Little Ollie Road, which goes around to the east of Poplar. And you can put in through Swamp that way to get in down to the back side of Caribou. So we've got a, a weekend. It's weird not living up on the Gunflin Trail anymore. So we're up here for the weekend, staying out at the Poplar Creek Yurt tonight. And then tomorrow we've got ambitions to 
get out early, get a trail center breakfast, and then head out to either Duncan or Moss, depending on how we do today. Moss is always the, the sure thing almost when it comes to lake trout. Whereas Duncan's a little bit more hit or miss in our experience, but opportunities for larger ones and it's entirely in the boundary water. So it feels a little bit better to be out there. I don't know if the gradual hill that you can see in front of me is as apparent in the video as it is to me, but this has literally been what the whole trail out here has been. I'm sure the heavy breathing and broken sentences on the video are coming clear that I am pulling it. Not that heavy of a sled, but it's there. It's not footloose and fancy free skiing by any means. And it's unfortunately been dragged over probably a few too many gravel roads and driveways. So it's probably not the smoothest skis on the bottom anymore. So we've discussed these things in the past with winter camping specifically and how much more subjective and condition based equipment usage is in the winter. There are some things you can point to in the summertime for traveling through the Bondi waters that that's just the way it should be done. That's the best piece of equipment to use in all conditions really. In the winter it's so highly variable you need to be ready to choose your method of travel and how you're going to drag it if you're dragging. So considering the short distance, it's a nice packed trail. And then I haven't skied in a while. I went with skis, but there is a lake ahead of me. So I do have snowshoes packed and additional muck boots because the little, the little dainty Peter Pan skiing slippers are really not great to have out on a lake, especially if there's any slush. Nice little hill here. Whew. That thing feels heavy going up those hills. I'll tell you that much. I might be, I might be scratching a ride on the way back out tomorrow. I think that's what it's called, isn't it? Any skateboarders out there? Send me an email, tumblehumcast at gmail.com. Is that what it's called when you grab onto like the back of a bus? Like Marty McFly does in the first scene of Back to the Future? I believe that's called scritching. Not to be confused with screeching. Getting screeched in, I believe, is a rite of passage if you're visiting either Newfoundland or Labrador, something out there in Eastern Canada where you have to do a crazy shot to some hyper local horrible tasting liquor, I'm sure. And you get screeched in as an honorary Newfoundlander. Any Newfoundlanders out there? Send me an email. 
tumblehomecast at gmail.com with your screeching in process. Looks like we're arriving at the Iron Doggies. We'll see what the portage into portage looks like. And how often this sled, which has up to this point been more or less a dream, pulls through the woods. If you're still with us, thank you for joining me. I more or less started this to give myself just a little bit of entertainment as the gradual hills were kind of starting to get to me a little bit there. This is where this is where it'll get interesting. Should see if the sled if the sled doesn't tip over immediately. We'll have a pretty good groove to follow here. Hey, and you know. really prefer not to start shushing down any of these hills as soon as you get one of these skis shooting off into the woods you basically just run into trees and get all pinched and jammed in and then it becomes a whole process I'd really rather not put the snowshoes on I can help it at this point, but we'll see. This is basically like walking on, feels like three feet of just sugar snow. Ooh. I would imagine it would be a real drag to be walking through. I mean, you can see how long my ski pole is. It goes in, it's a solid three feet of snow there. I hope everybody had snowshoes I didn't necessarily notice or not. This might just eventually be a bonus track that goes up. Let's see, uh oh, <laughs> I see some, some items up here on the trail that have been either discarded on purpose or have fallen on accident. Should be interesting. Oh no. Just think if they didn't have me as a nice little tailor, they want me to grab all their beer. They're gonna pay for it. You can see, oh no, things are getting Pretty, pretty deep in here. Whew. Block the trail with your beer. That's what you get for coming out here with some guys from Wisconsin. Dropping their new Glarus on the side of the trail. For now, I said we are Boundary water is adjacent. Cans are legal. <laughs> this is a, a real yard sale out here. We've got discarded Vexlar apparatus. Looks like we've got a discarded 
auger up here as well. That's important. All right, I feel like this might be the time to ditch the skis. Unfortunately, they've served me well, but I think it's time to say goodbye and then say goodbye to you. Because this is going to start to get probably pretty jarring to watch. <sighs> there is some snow out here. Holy moly. All right. I'm in. Drop her down. Oh, oh yeah, that's how you arm a barn lift on a fancy. Arm it? Arm it barn lift. You got an armor barn lifter in here or what? Like good right there. Alright. Yeah, we'll hook like that. Oh no, he's all He's all covered in snow. Oh fuck. Here, Andrew. Right. Okay. Little pink dots. God didn't make that. Man made that. That is a hybrid fish. <laughs> mad scientist. God a mad scientist. God could never make a fish Jeez. that pretty. Mm -mm. Beautiful fish. There you go. Come on. <laughs> They're so slippery. Yeah. You oh. were sitting at home last weekend making fun of all the people slipping around on the splakes. I was. I'm like, you idiots don't splakes, know how to Just grab the fish. I'll wipe it. I'll wipe it. You grab Ooh, it. Ooh, man. Oh, boy. Nice job. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a miracle of science. <laughs> Give this man a fireball. Get, this man Get a that fire. man yeah. a fireball. <laughs> yeah. Splake and fireball. Goes together like spruce and wood. <laughs> hey. One Ooh. for the splake. Well, that was all right.
<laughs> All right. Mm, good morning from the yurt. Look at this good boy. Make sure you sweep every morning. Every morning. Always have a broom. <laughs> Goodbye, yurt. The only true way to jig. This is how you get the the actual feeling of the trout. This is how you fish a tingler. What you want to do is get yourself a tingler jig and uh, 20 feet of line. Get yourself a buddy who will make you a nice uh, ice castle. Uh, sit on the ice castle. A snow bale. Ice clown, drown town clown in tax town. See you later, suckers. <laughs> Are you filming? Okay, so we yeah. are definitely right, watching the end of the humanity of society go. <laughs> These guys are taking poor Eric up to the end of the trail. <laughs> Eric, what do you feel like? They're about to be dragged up a hill. I really I really feel like I'm being over recorded right now. It's very weird. <laughs> very weird. I don't know what to think of it, but I'm glad I don't have to fucking work at getting up the hill. I've climbed my last hill. <laughs> good night, good night, night, sweet prince. It was nice and knowing he's you. He's good. He's good and dead. All right. All right. That's Get him out of here. Idea. That's a terrible idea. You guys are just gonna walk? Yeah. I feel like there's enough room. There's a, there's some room on here for you. There's no room. All right. straight now we're right. good well, good trail yeah yeah
was just gonna wait to see. I, I also wanna always check like if there's anyone coming down the portage. Oh yeah, for sure. I think the coast is clear. All right. Is that oh. light like blinding you? It is definitely yeah, blinding me. How do you shut this off? It's one of the switches. Switches? Good job. Oh, yeah. oh god. If you get to the, the uh, if you get to the top of the hill and I'm not there, you can still stop and just dump this thing. <laughs> I may bail halfway up. Depends on how this fucking ride goes. <laughs> okay. Try and get.